Hello, everyone. It's great to be here and uh, to be talking with you right before lunch. Hope we all have good blood sugar, keep us energized for this last 20 minute talk um, before you get some food in your body. Um, so I'm gonna start out today and share a little bit of my story and background of how I got here, um, and then talk to you about what we're doing at Embodied Labs and some of the data we've collected around um, how our Embodied Labs solutions have Im uh, been implemented to uh, provide important caregiver training. Uh, so 10 years ago, I was uh, 18, I was in college, um, and my mom was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's disease. And about five years later, I was living at home with her um, and my dad as one of her primary caregivers. And it was my job to hire her first home health aides. And so as I was training them and explaining my mom's health to them, um, I, would, I would talk to them about this left visual field deficit that my mom had in addition to her, her Alzheimer's. And I'd say, you know, it's not like she can't see out of the left halves of, or, you know, the left side like this, but it's the left halves and so many words and trying to translate that into her care. And so I eventually created these goggles, my earliest prototype of embodied labs, and said, put these on. And so that let them immediately feel for themselves, okay, I need to be protecting the left side of her body. And if I'm gonna approach her, it should be from the right. And then she would do this at mealtime. She would eat exactly half of her plate of food. So we'd have to rotate it so she could finish her meal. And so what, I, what we saw from the, these goggles is they could do a great job simulating this one aspect of my mom's condition. Um, but I really wanted more than that. And so I wondered, you know, what if we could somehow transport ourselves into the stories and perspectives of our patients, and if we could, could that improve care? So my background is in public health education and eventually medical visualization. And what we do today at Embody Labs is we use virtual reality to address key problems in aging healthcare. Um, and so if we look at some of the key problems we're facing right now in caregiving, um, we have this age wave or silver tsunami happening where we're having more uh, people over age 65 um, than we've, we've seen before. And that problem's not going away. Um, so we have a nursing shortage, a, a huge need for our workforce to be trained up and stay prepared to give care to our, our elder population. Um, and so what we do with our trainings is we create these immersive VR experiences and they really drive um, improved outcomes in caregiving, a positive company culture shift, they impact staff turnover and retention, um, and then become tools that our B2B uh, customers can provide as caregiver education and outreach to family caregivers as well. And so our, our product is a subscription to a hardware, software, and services bundle. You get an out-of-the-box, ready-to-use VR kit, um, and that has all of our platform and content already loaded onto it. Uh, and that, that platform really provides our curriculum and frame, framework and then our data tracking and analytics um, component to the VR content that we've, we have as well. And so we've created this Embodied Labs learning framework, uh, prepare, embody, reflect, and apply, so that that VR component that's really core to our solution can become not just a medium, but really a tool and then end-to-end -end way to solve some key issues in caregiver training. Um, so prepare includes taking a pretest, getting a baseline data assessment of where the caregiver is before they go through embodied experiences. Um, they get an introduction to what they're going to do and what they're going to learn so that when they're in VR, they're not paying attention to the technology, but really optimize to learn from those experiences. Um, and then after they come out of these, these short five to seven minute VR modules, they reflect, they take a post assessment, and then we have a whole framework for integrating that back into their day-to-day uh, on, -day on the job caregiving, where they can apply that as behavior changes in their care practices. Um, so some of the content that's in our library deals with these issues you see here. Um, so our solutions build, they take live action film content, um, and then we track and project your own hands as the, the patient or elder whose journey you're embodying. And then we add in these CG interactive elements and real-time rendered objects that really give you agency um, and help engage you in this very experiential kind of learning. Uh, this is a screenshot from our macular degeneration and hearing loss themed journey. Uh, 
uh, we also always include this medical animation that helps uh, our caregivers connect to the actual disease pathology of, of what's happening behind these different kinds of common things we see as we age. Um, so again, in our Alzheimer's journey, you actually go inside the brain. You learn about the structure of the brain, and then you go inside the, the uh, neuron forest and actually inside a neuron and really experience through this embodied learning how Alzheimer's disease progresses. And then uh, harnessing kind of the power of what VR does best is we can jump from micro back out to macro and really apply that to the story, the big picture context of, of how these things play out in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and this next week, we're actually we're releasing our end of life journey where you embody someone who has received a terminal cancer diagnosis and then uh, you learn from their perspective what happens in that journey. You also learn about what happens in your body as you go through something like a terminal illness. Um, and in this one, we have some embodied journeys through the perspectives of the care team as well. So VR does that great too. You can take on perspectives that you could otherwise never experience and then you you can also switch between perspectives as often as you want to really gain this holistic kind of understanding of care. And so what I really wanted to share with you today is some of the data that we've seen from both our um, initial academic benchmark uh, subscribers and then our growing body of long-term care and home health organizations that are using this in their care practices. Uh, so we initially worked with 12 academic institutions um, all across these different healthcare professions, anything from an MD or a DO to uh, use in social work, uh, physical therapy, nursing programs. And we really wanted to see how this was impacting knowledge, behavior change, and overall caregiver readiness. So to illustrate some of the things we've learned, I'm going to look at a case study from our uh, medical students at the University of Illinois Chicago. So uh, we did this study where we had about 100 medical students in their second year go through our Alfred experience, the vision and hearing impairment lab, um, as part of their geriatrics curriculum. And so then we asked in our pre-post assessment a few things. And um, we, I'm going to share a few slides of data around what we saw um, in a shift between what they said before going through the Alfred lab and then uh, coming out after it. Um, so we had them self-rate whether they felt like embodying their patient in VR was something that was important uh, for their career preparation. Um, so you see more yellow on the bottom, and that's illustrating this overall shift from um, saying, I, I agree, I strongly agree, pre-post that this is an important thing that I should be doing. Um, we asked uh, pre-post for them to rate whether they agreed with the statement of I agree or I understand the perspectives of an elderly patient. So there's uh, more blue on top and those are the disagree, somewhat uh, disagree statements and you see a big shift to green and yellow. So pre-post we saw um, more students feel like they understood that perspective. And then we asked them a more qualitative question. Uh, we looked at the words and phrases they used to uh, describe aging or older adults. And then we quantified those. And we saw pre-post this huge shift in how they uh, uh, decreased the way that they use more stereotypical words to describe um, our elders and aging populations. And so then just to kind of summarize some of these outcomes, um, we saw overall an another question that we asked indicated their interest in geriatric specialties. We saw some shift there for more interest after going through this experience. Um, we also saw that these medical students were dissecting uh, the, the difference between audio-visual impairment and cognitive impairment, um, which is a really important skill for diagnosing, uh, accurately diagnosing somebody that may be dealing with one or another or both of those issues. Uh, we also had the University of Illinois Chicago's medical education department do a, um, a, a focus group with students and we got feedback like this, uh, that the, it was the best six minutes that they spent in their entire geriatrics unit, um, which was great because um, I don't know if anyone's worked with medical students, but I learned they're very tough critics of their education. Um, we saw lots of uh, groans having to come in and spend 10 minutes doing our pre-test, the Alfred experience and post-test. Um, so when 
we saw this feedback come back, they said, you know, it was efficient, it was effective, and it taught me so much, and it only took this, this six minutes of my day to experience. Um, and so really, the, some of the conclusions that they saw were, we want more of these kinds of learning opportunities. Um, and then some of my favorite reactions that I saw are here. So everyone in their prepare before they went into the Alfred lab read as part of the introduction that they were going to embody someone that had uh, macular degeneration and hearing loss. And without fail, our medical students would get into the headset and exclaim, uh, what's wrong with this headset? It's broken. There's a black spot in the middle of my, of my vision. Um, and so that really illustrates this concept that the way they traditionally learn, which is through an unfolding paper case where they read on a paper these things, um, doesn't translate to the way we experience and understand these conditions. Um, and again, with the volume, can, you, can someone turn up the volume? Something's wrong here. Um, and then that com uh, kind of compiled with some of the components of this journey where they actually had to pick up a pencil and try and take a cognitive assessment. Um, they had to struggle to complete an exam. Um, that really drove home to them that while they were you know, cognitively all, all intact, they were struggling to do something because of a physical audiovisual impairment. Um, so that really helped them think about how they're diagnosing patients um, in their future careers. Um, and I think another piece of what VR does illustrated in this reaction list is we saw posture changes. So there was a point in the experience where the students were given hearing aids at the very end where the doctor said, here I noticed you have a hearing impairment, put these on. And immediately you would see relief where they'd be like, oh, that's so much better. Or you know, even leaning forward and leading in or mimicking the way we, uh, people with central vision loss turn their head so they can see around that black spot. Okay, so second set of data. We, we transitioned from working with, uh, we still work with lots of academic institutions, all the ones you saw and, and more. We're always increasing um, the, the sort of benchmark that our academic institutions provide and how this kind of learning is impactful. Um, but we've all really focused our last year on growing uh, our work with the long-term care and home health uh, industry. And so we've worked with these organizations to uh, most typically engage 100% of staff across an organization to go through these five to seven minute modules, that whole uh, prepare, embody, reflect, apply framework once a quarter. And then we have them revisit and reflect on what they go through in staff meetings and small nurse team huddles. Um, and then they uh, have begun to create their own workshops and support group curriculum to offer this to their, uh, their customers, uh, family members of residents in their communities or that they care for in the home. And so I'm going to share one of uh, uh, the case studies that we have around a workshop we did for a leadership training summit uh, where we had about 100 participants, uh, about a third were, they were all from the same uh, care organization that had 40 sites across the Midwest. And of the 100, about a third were CEOs, a third were admins, and a third were directors of nursing. Um, so really people who, who know care, had been in it for a long time, and are kind of what I would think of as experts in in care and in what they do. Um, so keep that in mind as you look at some of the data I'll show you of what we saw in their pre and post assessments. So we asked them pre-post going through that same Alfred lab. Um, I understand how vision loss may impact the daily life of a resident. So in that graph, you're, you see a shift uh, pre-post, so post is blue, where you see more towards the, the tens. And then you also see uh, a shorter range of where gray is. So that's indicating that people were agreeing more pre-post, that they felt like they understood how vision loss may impact the daily life of a resident. Um, so, for example, the spectrum uh, for pre was from 3 to 5, uh, for post, 6 to 10. Um, and then we saw more people, uh, that 50 to 77 percent jump of how many were choosing a 9 or a 10 um, in, in the post assessment. Um, and then in the second question we asked, we said, uh, okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, agree or disagree, 
one being disagree, 10 being agree, the things that I do in my role on the care team has an impact on the quality of life of residents with Alzheimer's disease. So we're looking at empowerment here. How empowered are you as a, as a member of a care team for the, the customer or the resident you serve? And we saw that, again, a shift where we saw more nines or tens post than we did pre. Um, and so that really indicates something important. It's, it's that by going through the Beatrice journey, the Alzheimer's disease journey, uh, people felt more empowered in their belief that, that their actions and their role was impacting the quality of life of the, the people that they serve. And then the third thing we asked, um, again, about the Alzheimer's disease journey was the behaviors I see in a resident with Alzheimer's disease are a result of a diseased brain, not a personality or mental health problem. And so we saw a big jump here where pre we got a spectrum of answers from 4 to 10, and then that sh uh, shrunk and shifted to 7 to 10 post. Um, and then we saw a, a little bit of an increase in how um, people chose a 9 or a 10 more often in post than they did pre. Um, and so this is important because one of the things that is really hard about caring for residents with Alzheimer's is you, um, you're having to deal with really challenging behaviors all of the time. And it can be sort of human nature to become frustrated with the person rather than keeping in mind that it's the disease. So that really illustrates how the embodiment concept of actually being able to embody the disease process of Alzheimer's can really translate to some core beliefs uh, and really a shift in core, core beliefs of how we think about our residents and, um, and what's resulting from the, the, their diagnoses. And so overall, we've gotten feedback um, like this. You know, people say, they come out of the headset and they say, um, uh, you know, this is something that anyone who works with the aging population needs to do. And we've heard I've, people say, I've read and read about this disease, but spending five minutes in Beatrice's journey really gave me more than I've ever been able to read um, to understand this condition. Um, so again, that, that people are feeling more patient with residents, uh, more knowledgeable about the conditions, and this is translating into behavior change and more empowered caregivers. Um, and so I, we did just recently win Most Viable Solution uh, from AARP and United Healthcare as a uh, solution for training family caregivers. So one of our big pushes now is to really help get this out to more than just um, aging healthcare services organizations, but say, how do we address all of the caregivers out there that are dealing with this disease? Um, and I just want to end on, on that note and say that it's our dream at Body Labs that everyone can go through these kinds of journeys so that we can improve caregiving um, across the board here in the United States and globally as we all deal with this inevitable, inevitable thing called aging. So thank you. <laughs>